invitation uh, to give um, so such a talk here, especially to such a large uh, audience. Uh, actually, I hate uh, speaking uh, online, but I understand in the current situation is the best uh, paradigm to the um, existing uh, restrictions. Uh, also, I'm quite honored to give a talk on the 21st day of the 21st year of the 21st century. I think so. The only thing we could improve is so this talk should begin at 21 21. <laughs> so, <meaning, laughs> so, 9 p.m. So, but anyway, let's begin. And indeed, I'll be talking about so it will be some summary of uh, results uh, obtained uh, by, uh, say, uh, our research team in collaboration with uh, research teams in. Uh, China, uh, Russia, uh, South Korea, uh, and uh, other places on um, probing so the diagnostics of uh, the plasma of, of the solar corona with uh, MHD waves. So it's a large topic. So and recently we had a major uh, international online conference. So with participants from uh, five continents, and uh, so I think so more than a hundred participants run by um, uh, Dmitry Kolakov and Bo Lee uh, in December. And obviously, in this 15 minute talk, I'm not able to cover even a small uh, fraction of the uh, material. So, hence, I decided to uh, tell about pink oscillations and mainly concentrating on the uh, observational aspect because possibly it's uh, closer to the general interest of the uh, audience. So, and we just recording how pink oscillations uh, look like. So, this is the first movie we uh, analyzed. So, is the event. Uh, so in summer of 1998, very long time ago, when I was a postdoc of Bernie Roberts at St. Andrews, you see uh, oscillating uh, displacements of loops in the transverse direction, so which decay. So, and uh, possibly we uh, can use uh, movies of this kind for, uh, say, dissemination of uh, our science to the general public, because uh, what we see are uh, possibly the longest electromagnetic waves, which are resolved uh, simultaneously in time and in space. Of course, there are longer electromagnetic waves, for example, say galactic arms could be considered as electromagnetic waves or magnetoacoustic waves, but we don't see the evolution in time. So while here, so we are able to resolve both, uh, say, oscillation in time and in space. So, so hence is the longest electromagnetic waves in the universe, so which could be resolved by our instruments in time and in space. So uh, those uh, phenomena so have been observed intensively for almost, say, 25 years, 23 years, obviously. So we uh, managed to uh, reach a major, say, breakthrough in, uh, say, understanding of the uh, uh, physical mechanisms responsible for them. And so there is a huge progress in um, data analytical techniques and uh, so in gathering uh, statistical information about those events. So, and possibly I'll begin with uh, just making some estimation because uh, very often, so since well, maybe the very uh, first uh, detection of these oscillations, uh, so they are considered in the context of coronal heating. So if you make a very simple order of magnitude estimation of the energy involved in this oscillation, and so the oscillation decays, so hence the energy is converted into uh, no, in the end, so it's converted into the internal energy, into heat. So the estimation would be very straightforward. If the period of oscillations is about several minutes, let's take uh, 300 seconds. Uh, typical displacement is uh, five uh, megameters. Again, it's the say, relatively average uh, value. So hence, we are able to calculate the uh, velocity uh, amplitude, uh, amplitude of the velocity displacement, which is about 30 kilometers per second. So then uh, just assuming that the electron concentration in the loop is uh, four times 10 to the nine uh, per cubic uh, centimeter. So we are able to estimate the energy density as the product of the mass density and the velocity squared by two. So we get into this uh, value uh, shown here. So okay, possibly I'll try to use, uh, no, it doesn't work. Okay, I believe you can see my cursor. Uh, so then, if you have the energy density, so multiplying it by the volume of the plasma in the loop, so we are getting the total energy. So for a typical uh, length uh, so of the loop of 200 megameters and typical uh, minor uh, radius of about uh, 1 megameter, so we get in the volume. So and we estimate the energy decayed or released by this uh, decaying installation as uh, 2 times 10 to the 25 Earth. So, which is comparable to a nanoflare. So, and obviously, so we can so very 
say, uh, confidently confer, uh, conclude that so those oscillations do not contribute to coronal heating because so, so we see usually several events uh, in a year, so meaning several nanoflares a year, definitely not able to heat the corona. So on the other hand, so those oscillations, they provide us with a very interesting tool, so or natural probe for the diagnostics of the plasma. So what would we call MHD seismology or MHD wave-based uh, seismology? So now it's a, say, who developed develop uh, research uh, avenue in our research community in solar physics in general. It's one of the dedicated aims of the atmospheric imaging assembly instrument on SDO. It's one of the science uh, objectives of uh, future space missions, uh, such as uh, Proba 3, uh, such as the uh, Korean uh, uh, coronavirus from the uh, International Space Station, so the uh, sound rocket experiment uh, high C. So it was named as one of the key methods uh, for uh, so space weather, uh, say, uh, input parameters in Schrader's uh, report, um, so which is the roadmap for our community for 2015-2025. So there are neighboring uh, techniques for magnetoseismology or magnetospheric seismology. By the way, I really uh, dislike so the use of the term magnetoseismology to the sound. So if you want to be, say, uh, different from, <laughs> so using different terminology, possibly you should use the term corona seismology, not magnetoseismology, because magnetoseismology is the term reserved for magnetospheric seismology. And also MHD uh, spectroscopy of laboratory plasma devices, such as uh, tokamaks and uh, stellarators. So as I've said, it's a fully developed um, uh, avenue in our research community. And uh, so in this talk, I'll uh, only touch uh, so with uh, some uh, details, uh, so the observational aspects, because uh, obviously we're doing uh, solar physics, and so we should begin with the experimental results. So, but uh, in any case, I'll begin with uh, theory. Because so the theory of those oscillations so uh, was developed uh, well before their uh, observational detection. So the standard theory of MHD seismology, as we call it. So in other words, is the theory of interaction of MHD waves with uh, plasma non-uniformities designed by uh, Zaitsev and Skipanov and later uh, independently by Bernie Robertson colleagues. So is a very standard, uh, say, uh, second year undergraduate program. So if you have uh, MHD equations, we uh, determine equilibrium, so we linearize energy uh, equations with respect to the uh, equilibrium, so we apply certain boundary conditions and get in some uh, dispersion relations. So it's my just temptation to show this dispersion relation because my uh, first, uh, say, um, uh, acquaintance with um, uh, MHD seismology and so the study of MHD waves began with uh, Eric uh, Priest's uh, book, so the chapter on uh, MHD uh, waves where this distortion relation was uh, introduced to me for the first time, while of course it was published before in papers of Isaac Stefanov and uh, Edwin Roberts. So uh, this distortion relation uh, links parameters of uh, uh, oscillations, such as frequency, such as the parallel uh, wave number or wavelength, uh, and also the uh, azimuthal wave number uh, M, uh, or azimuthal mode number M, so with parameters of the medium, so with the alpha speed and sound speed inside and outside the uh, oscillating structure, in this case it's a straight uh, plasma uh, cylinder, so fit uh, in by the plasma and surrounded by a plasma with different properties, uh, and also penetrated by a magnetic field, so inside and outside. Uh, and also densities of the plasma inside and outside are included in this discussion relation. So it's been solved and discussed for 30 years. I'm not, uh, say, uh, discussing uh, so this in uh, details, but uh, according to the uh, azimuthal uh, mode number, uh, and we may have different symmetries of the perturbations and properties of waves are known to depend uh, very strongly uh, upon those uh, symmetries. So, and uh, so the mode which corresponds to M equals to one. So this is, uh, so this is the king mode. So this is what we are going to discuss uh, today. So uh, here, so we uh, show the uh, linear polarization. So you see the perturbation is uh, in this direction. By the way, it's the only uh, MHD mode of a plasma cylinder which perturbs the uh, axis uh, of the uh, cylinder. So, but also we may have uh, right hand or uh, left hand uh, circular uh, polarization. So there is the superposition of uh, so two uh, linear polarizations, and also of course we may have some uh, uh, say transitions between linear polarization and circular polarization. So the uh, elliptical polarization. Uh, 
so this is the side view of an oscillating uh, cylinder. So you see the uh, foot points of the say latent loop. So usually we consider so in our modeling a loop as a straight uh, cylinder. So and what is shown here is the fundamental harmonic, so which displaces uh, so the uh, cylinder mainly near the center. So in other words, near the top of the loop or apex uh, of the loop. Uh, what is important here, uh, so the color scheme shows the perturbation of the density of the plasma. So the skin oscillation does perturb the density of the plasma. So hence actually it is a uh, fast magnetic acoustic wave. So this fast magnetic acoustic wave is uh, locally oblique uh, to the uh, field as it should be for a fast wave in a uniform medium, but because of the uh, non-uniformity stretched along the magnetic field. Actually, the waves propagate along the magnetic field. So this is uh, a reason of uh, long-standing confusion. So some people consider those waves as some version of alpha waves. So they are not, they are uh, locally fast magnetic acoustic. So and now, uh, actually in our research community, there are two uh, terms uh, used uh, so for this kind of oscillation. So the standard uh, term kink, which I'll be using so throughout this uh, talk, uh, introduced initially, I think so, by Bernie Roberts. Uh, and also more recently, so they are called alphen ik waves, meaning so uh, like alphen, but not alphen. Uh, however, I would well, prefer to be old fashioned and so use the traditional name uh, kink uh, modes. So, but this uh, snapshot uh, of the perturbation of the density produced by the King oscillation clearly shows that we are dealing with a fast magnetoacoustic perturbation. So, in the low beta plasma of the corona. Uh, so, the uh, wave is collective, it involves all the uh, loop in the uh, oscillation in contrast with, uh, say, uh, true alpha waves, which uh, so, uh, correspond to perturbations of neighboring. Uh, magnetic uh, surfaces or surfaces of the constant alpha speed, and uh, so those perturbations are uh, not collected. So they are uh, so may have different actually uh, arbitrary uh, transverse uh, structure. But this uh, perturbation is collected uh, because of that it is uh, dispersive. So because of the problem we have the characteristic spatial scale, so the uh, radius or minor radius of our oscillating loop. And uh, because of that, uh, so the phase and the group speed of the King oscillation uh, are different uh, for different wavelengths or frequencies. And in the long wavelength limit, so when the uh, parallel or along the field wavelength is much greater than the uh, minor radius of the loop, so the phase and group speeds of the King mode approach the uh, King uh, speed, so which was uh, initially uh, derived by uh, Rutova and Rutov, and then so was re-derived by uh, a number of authors. Essentially, it is the uh, alpha speed inside the uh, oscillating cylinder, so multiplied by some coefficient, which contains the uh, ratio of the densities inside and outside the uh, flux tube. So the expression which I show here corresponds to the uh, low beta uh, limit, uh, say typical for uh, coronal active regions. Uh, so then, uh, so those waves are uh, subject to uh, dumping. So and so here there is some interesting mathematics uh, involved. Uh, in particular, if you have some uh, smooth uh, profile of the uh, fast or alpha speed uh, across the uh, say uh, loop. So in other words, so the uh, radial profile of the density of the plasma in the low beta limit is uh, smooth. Uh, in this case, we may have some. Uh, locations uh, where the phase speed of the King uh, wave coincides with the local alpha speed. So, and at those regions, we have linear coupling of the uh, collective King oscillation. So, with the uh, non uh, collective uh, alphenic motions or torsional motions. So, hence, we have a linear coupling between the King oscillation and uh, torsional uh, alpha oscillations. But uh, possibly the word coupling, so the term coupling is not the best uh, to describe the situation because it's a one-way uh, road, one-way story, because the energy of the kink motion goes to the torsional motion. So while so there is no uh, so the uh, feedback, so the uh, energy doesn't go back, at least in the linear regime. Uh, and according to a very elaborated theory of um, resonant absorption of kink oscillations because of the uh, radial non-uniformity of the plasma in the oscillating cylinder, uh, designed mainly by uh, Misha Ruderman, who is in the audience, and uh, Marcel Dussens, and uh, Joe Polvik, and Bernie Roberts. 
So uh, we are getting a very useful uh, relationship between the dumping time, so which actually is not the dissipation time, but the uh, time of the uh, transfer of energy from the uh, kink oscillation into the uh, torsional oscillations uh, to the period of the torsional oscillation. So this ratio is uh, constant. So in other words, so the ratio of the dumping time to the period of oscillation could be considered as the uh, cube factor of the oscillation or quality factor of the oscillation. So and so this quality factor is a constant for different periods of uh, oscillations, which uh, immediately suggests us a, a way to uh, validate uh, so this relationship uh, observationally, and I'll, uh, I'll come to this a bit later. So this is where the uh, resonant uh, layers occur. So and this is where the uh, transfer of energy from kink oscillations to uh, uh, torsional oscillations uh, so should take place. Uh, so with uh, commissioning of the atmospheric imaging uh, assembly, so which is also a very uh, advanced instrument in comparison with trace uh, in terms of uh, time resolution and uh, signal to noise ratio, uh, observations of kink oscillation became, um, well, maybe not routine, but at least very uh, regular. So I'm here just showing one of the uh, events. You can see here the oscillating loop, so which shows uh, decaying uh, oscillations and on the left so we show the uh, so uh, techniques which is traditional for the analysis of those oscillations so we uh, show uh, displacement of the oscillating loop along some slip which we select uh, according to the you know, possibly direction of the uh, highest oscillation amplitude so here there are two uh, options say one uh, direction of the um, observation of sleep and the other. So the model was produced by Giuseppe Mistico. So, and then we construct this um, displacement as a function of time, getting the uh, so called uh, time distance uh, uh, plot, which clearly shows the uh, oscillatory and actually uh, almost harmonic uh, displacement of the loop uh, in time. So, which uh, allows us to determine the period of oscillation, dump in time. Uh, various relations uh, between, uh, say, perturbations or oscillations of different loops, etc. So this is the standard technique for the uh, analysis of the uh, data. So and uh, actually, so just re re reiterating what I have said. So this uh, typical time distance uh, uh, plot or time distance map. So displacement in megameters is the vertical axis. Our time in our minutes is the uh, horizontal axis. And you can see so the nice and clean uh, harmonic oscillation, which uh, so has the envelope which decays in time. And best fitting this with uh, certain functions, we can determine the uh, frequency or period of oscillations, uh, dumping time or decrement. So here, so we use some e to the minus uh, time to the power n, uh, say, hypothesis about the uh, decay mechanism. But of course, we can test any other. Say, uh, say mechanisms which are uh, predicted by uh, different creators. So and so as I've mentioned, uh, seismology. So this oscillation uh, allows uh, to estimate the uh, magnetic field in the oscillating loop. So using this uh, simple relation, so which includes the uh, length of the loop, includes the oscillation period, and so we are talking about a single period because the oscillation looks. Uh, usually very harmonic. So in some cases we see higher harmonics, but so they still uh, sufficiently uh, rarely uh, detected. And also so the ratio of densities inside and outside the oscillating loop and the density inside the loop. So we can measure in principle or estimate all those parameters somehow, but unfortunately not very precisely. So the period possibly is the uh, most precisely known parameter. So the length of the loop depends upon the uh, geometry and in principle requires the uh, say um, observations so in 3D so which we have lost uh, so the uh, so uh, stereo so but we had several observations of in constellations so with uh, non-parallel lines of sight using the EUV uh, I instrument on our stereo so and also the density so is a, a difficult parameter to measure however so it still can be estimated uh, so um, so with uh, some precision. And actually, so here, so the density is uh, under the, well, um, so we, we take a root of the density. So because of that, the error uh, in the estimation of the density is actually 
uh, decreased by a factor of two in the estimation of the magnetic field, at least now, so the nature is sufficiently kind to us. So hence, we're able to estimate the magnetic field. Of course, it's a very uh, rough uh, estimation because this model doesn't take into account so the variation of the loop uh, cross-section. So, but actually, observations show that usually loops are of a constant cross-section. So there is no stratification, which is possibly more uh, important uh, so for that. So meaning, so the density so is taken uh, as the average density in the loop, not. Uh, accounting for the variation of the density with height, while well, it's uh, actually quite uh, say, um, uh, possible to take it into account. And uh, Ruderman and Dimova uh, developed an elegant theory so which allows us to make these uh, estimations. Uh, and also, there is no uh, twist or uh, sigmoidity so of the loop, so meaning departure of the uh, loop shape from plane. So, which also could be built in uh, so the uh, mathematics, while of course it is uh, so sufficiently cumbersome and laborious task, but all this can be taken into account. So, hence we get on the estimation of the magnetic field, which at least gives us some reference point for, uh, for the validation of, uh, say, patent, uh, um, force free uh, extrapolations of the field. Uh, plus, uh, so this estimation. Uh, is possible uh, of link uh, where so the uh, extrapolation techniques uh, fail. So hence, so just combining so this uh, seismological technique for the estimation of the magnetic field with results of the extrapolation and possible results of the uh, microwave uh, spectroscopy. So all the uh, coronal emissions. So we have an uh, say, uh, interesting uh, chance to make some combined uh, tools for the uh, diagnostics of the magnetic field. So not relying on a single technique. So first, how those uh, oscillations are excited. So this is a movie, so which shows a very typical uh, event. So, and it was uh, found out that about 86% of kink oscillation events are associated with various uh, low coronal eruptions. What you see here is some eruption, which is clearly seen. And essentially what is going on, this eruption is pushing the uh, set of uh, loops in this Arctic region uh, outside the uh, pre-existing equilibrium. And then, so the loops oscillate around this equilibrium, as you can see. So essentially, as we have a pendulum and we make the excitation of oscillations of a pendulum by simply grabbing the uh, load and displacing it at some height and then releasing. So as I've said, so about 86% of um, detected in oscillations are excited by some version of this mechanism. So here, so we just illustrate uh, so what I showed you uh, in the movie, so with a sketch. So there is some uh, eruption. So in this case, it's some, say, uh, magnetic road, so which is unstable, which pushes a loop uh, sideways in the horizontal direction from the uh, equilibrium. So and then, so the loop simply oscillates around the equilibrium or around a new equilibrium if uh, during the uh, eruption, so the uh, configuration of the magnetic field got uh, reconstructed. So uh, not all uh, events, so I've said, so there are uh, remaining 14% of events, so which don't uh, match this scenario in particular. So this is a very uh, important and possibly very well known uh, event uh, called by Marcus Schmanden. So the uh, harmonica event, so we see some eruption uh, on the left side of the uh, arcade. So, and we have uh, so uh, oscillations, uh, kink oscillations of the uh, arcade loops, which clearly are excited by some uh, different mechanisms. So, meaning, of course, there is always room for uh, development of the theoretical models, but uh, to uh, possibly uh, our surprise, so this uh, excitation by a low coronal eruption by a simple mechanical displacement of the loop from the equilibrium is possibly the uh, least uh, studied. Uh, mechanism or least model mechanism uh, in uh, theory. So uh, for some reason, so our colleagues mainly spend so time and uh, put effort on more exotic mechanisms. But I have said so, 86% so are uh, excitation by simple mechanical displacement from the uh, equilibrium. So now our statistics of the pain pain oscillations. Now we have several hundred uh, events, and uh, in particular. Uh, in uh, 2019, we published a catalog of uh, kink oscillation events uh, observed uh, so with AIA during the uh, whole 24th uh, solar uh, cycle. 
which includes several hundred events. So, and now I'm just showing some uh, rough, say, uh, statistics uh, associated with observed in constellations. So here the histograms are showing the number of cases uh, as the uh, distribution over the uh, apparent or projected amplitude. So I stress it is the apparent amplitude because we always have to uh, correct. Uh, so the amplitude by the line of sight projection effect. So the angle between the line of sight and the uh, plane of the uh, oscillation, provided the oscillation is linearly polarized. So we see that typically, so the amplitudes are uh, if you uh, megameters. I mean, so the typical amplitude is comparable to the uh, minor radius of the loop or a bit uh, greater than that. So obviously, so here we have some uh, decrease. So uh, in the uh, region of uh, low amplitudes connected with the uh, resolutions. So then uh, next statistics is, uh, so the uh, distribution of periods of oscillations over, uh, sorry, uh, distribution over the period of oscillations. So period here is shown in uh, uh, minutes. So we can see that so there is a sufficiently broad distribution in the vicinity of five minutes. So because of that, uh, some colleagues uh, link uh, King oscillations with the leakage of moles, but later I will show that it's definitely not the case. Uh, so it's just coincidence that the uh, natural frequency uh, of uh, King oscillation is about five minutes. So without any relation with uh, e moles, so which are uh, existing somewhere so much deeper than uh, so the uh, loop oscillation. And okay, so we'll come back to this uh, a bit later. So next is the distribution over the uh, length uh, of the loop. So we can see that in principle, uh, loops of uh, all uh, observed uh, lengths uh, so may uh, show King oscillations. So because the uh, statistics is sufficiently uh, flat. Uh, so then uh, actually the demonstration why loops are natural or eigen uh, oscillations of coronal loops, why they are standing modes. So here we uh, simply tested the uh, uh, theoretical prediction that the period of a King oscillation, if it is uh, associated with a standing King uh, mode, so is a ratio of the length of the loop and the uh, King's key. So in other words, so we can statistically test where the period of the King oscillation scales are linearly with the length of the loop. And so is the period versus the loop length. And we clearly see that, so possibly the zero order approximation of this uh, scaling is a straight line. So is a straight line. And so the uh, typical gradient allows us to estimate the uh, King's speed, which is uh, several uh, hundred uh, kilometers per second, which is consistent with the expectation that the uh, king speed uh, should be connected with the alpine speed, and the alpine speed in the active region uh, plasma is uh, about a thousand kilometers per second by the order of magnitude. So here, so we show some uh, say distribution of uh, estimated king speeds. Uh, so with the use of the catalog uh, of Nishaeva uh, et al. So we're talking about. So usually uh, from one to two thousand kilometers per second is the experimental result, observational result, which uh, clearly validates this uh, estimation for relationship between the period and the uh, length of the loop. So there is actually uh, so with uh, so additional uh, events, uh, additional statistics. Uh, so distribution over the uh, King's speed. So we see again. So the distribution is from. Uh, several uh, hundred kilometers, per, uh, yes, hundred kilometers per second to several thousand kilometers per second, which is uh, so the integral uh, over the uh, solar cycle. So, and as now we have a sufficiently uh, elaborated uh, statistics. So, the catalog, as I have said, uh, includes uh, several uh, hundred uh, entries. Uh, so, hence, uh, so we may consider also evolution of this, uh, say, king uh, speed. So over the solar cycle, it's a future work which could be done by, by uh, some colleague. Uh, so another uh, statistical scaling is the scaling of the dumping time of the and King oscillation to be the period of oscillations. So it was proposed by uh, Leo Nothman and Markus Schwanden in actually sorry, about 20 years ago. Uh, and so the scaling, which is shown here in the log log plot, is mainly uh, linear. So they concluded that uh, so the scaling is um, uh, linear indeed. So the uh, decay time 
uh, scales are linearly with the period of oscillation. And as uh, uh, I have also already mentioned, so this is the theoretical prediction for the uh, dumping mechanism uh, based on resonant absorption of kink oscillations, linear coupling of uh, uh, kink oscillations with uh, unresolved uh, alphanic motions, torsional motions. So now we are able to uh, say make much uh, say better statistics. So there is the uh, recent results. Uh, dumping time, so versus a uh, period. Now it's uh, linear uh, scaling or linear plot. So because we uh, test the linear scaling, so and you know, again possibly uh, so the data cloud is sufficiently scattered. Uh, maybe it's not very conclusive to say that the uh, scaling is linear uh, indeed, uh, but so maybe the zero order uh, approximation indeed uh, confirms that the scaling of the dumping time with the period is linear, which confirms uh, so the uh, prediction of uh, resonant absorption theory. So just reminder, so the uh, decay time in the uh, resonant absorption uh, theory is linearly proportional to the uh, oscillation period. And this coefficient uh, actually uh, includes information about the density contrast ratio in the loop and about the uh, steepness of the uh, density profile uh, or alpha speed profile in the uh, loop. So hence we have, let's say, the zero order result confirms this um, uh, resonant absorption uh, result. So then, uh, so we may have a look at uh, scaling of the uh, dumping time with the apparent uh, amplitude of the oscillation. So in other words, what we do here, so we uh, compare, uh, so the dumping time divided by the period of oscillation. In other words, is the quality factor of the oscillation as a function of the projected or apparent amplitude. So this is the data cloud, which you see in the linear scale. So this is the same in the uh, log log uh, uh, representation. Uh, and what is important, so we need to, uh, so if you want to estimate this dependence of the quality factor upon the amplitude, we must not best fit this data cloud with a curve or line. So meaning we should not uh, say draw, so this, uh, uh, say scaling through the center of the data cloud, because so the amplitudes are uh, to be corrected by the uh, line of sight angle. In other words, what we see is the amplitude which is always lower or in the best case equal to the actual amplitude of the oscillation, because the plane of the oscillation uh, can be uh, inclined with respect to the line of sight. So hence, actually, so the best fitting should be not through the data cloud center, but through the outer boundary of the data cloud. So, uh, so this is what we can do here. Of course, so this curve is, let's say, not unique. You can argue that it could be done better, but in any case, we have just several uh, points, uh, data points here, so which we use for the best fit, despite we have a sufficiently good statistics. What we are interested in is the uh, boundary of the data cloud, so in the, uh, say, linear scale and also in the log log. Uh, scale, uh, but uh, what I uh, say uh, showed here is the curve which corresponds to the uh, scaling of the quality factor with the amplitude to the minus two third. So the quality factor decreases with the amplitude. So meaning higher amplitude oscillations are subject to more effective uh, dissipation or dumping at least. So which in principle is consistent with the common sense because nonlinear effects uh, should somehow uh, magnify, amplify, so the uh, dumping. So, and uh, so, uh, so this is the scale in which we uh, got uh, experimentally. So, and uh, it's still a question whether so theoretical mechanisms are able to uh, explain. Uh, and talking about um, mechanisms for uh, nonlinear dumping, possibly the most popular now is the Kelvin Helgold's instability, either at the boundary of the oscillating loop or at the uh, resonant layer. So where there are shear motions, shear motions across the magnetic field, meaning the magnetic field is not able to uh, stabilize uh, the uh, uh, oscillation. So hence we have the uh, enhanced uh, dumping, so which uh, initially I think was described by uh, uh, Philip Browning and Eric Priest uh, in the context of uh, alpha and phase mixing. So but for uh, say uh, kink oscillations in the vicinity of the resonant layer, so we also have uh, effective phase mixing of torsional motions, and uh, so the oscillation becomes unstable. So this is the result of uh, numerical simulations by John Turatus. You see the formation of the uh, typical uh, Kelvin uh, Helmholtz uh, vortex 
uh, say, street and the uh, oscillating boundary. So here the oscillation is uh, horizontally polarized. So and uh, so the major player in this uh, say research topic now is Patrick Antolin from Novambria. So who so actually very significantly advanced uh, our understanding of what is going on uh, in this uh, uh, say uh, process. Okay, so I was talking about decaying ink oscillations with a sufficiently large amplitude, which was uh, several uh, radii of the uh, oscillation uh, of the minor uh, radius of the oscillator. Uh, but uh, about eight years ago, so another regime decayed these ink oscillations. I understand that this term from the English point of view is not uh, ideal, but uh, now it's a traditionally used term, so which you know, I, I use also so in, in my publications and in this talk. So mean is oscillations without decay and even uh, showing sometimes uh, magnification or amplification of the amplitude. Uh, so these uh, snapshots of, of time distance uh, maps, so distance and time is usually the vertical and horizontal uh, axis, and we can see the uh, oscillation. So, and it doesn't show any uh, decay. And actually it's not associated with any specific event. So this oscillation simply exists uh, actually forever. So, and if we uh, take uh, such um, measurements uh, uh, at different uh, segments of the uh, oscillator, we will see that oscillations of different segments are in place. So we clearly deal with uh, so the standing uh, oscillation without decay, so which is uh, also a kink oscillation because of the transfer of displacement of the loop. So in phase everywhere, meaning it is a standing wave with a phase speed along the loop of about infinity as it should be. So, and now just showing this with a movie, this association of this decay oscillation with decay oscillation. What we see now is this loop, it shows very low amplitude bouncing, as you can see here. So, then, so there is the uh, eruption. So, the large amplitude uh, oscillation is excited, which rapidly decays. And then the loop actually does not stop near the equilibrium. It keeps, keeps bouncing uh, around the equilibrium. So this is best seen using at this, uh, so using this uh, time distance plot now. So the distance is in the horizontal direction and time is in the vertical direction. So the movie was made by Joseph uh, uh, Mystico. So you can see here, so this is the regime before the eruption. So we see a very clear, uh, say, oscillatory patterns, so which can, uh, so which allows us to estimate the period of oscillations. After that, so we see the uh, excitation of the large amplitude, uh, oscillation which rapidly decays exponentially. So while the oscillation keep, uh, say, going, and uh, actually the period of the oscillation is the same in the uh, both uh, uh, decayless and decaying regimes, meaning we are talking about the same natural oscillation uh, natural mode, eigen mode of the uh, resonator of the flux tube. So just two different regimes, decay, so with decay and without decay. So just taken apart at different uh, instances or periods of time. Uh, so statistics of kink oscillations. So this is the distribution over the amplitude. So the amplitudes are about an order of magnitude smaller than the uh, amplitudes of uh, detected kink oscilla uh, decay uh, oscillations. So we're talking about a fraction of a pixel. So, but uh, so the distribution is also growing so towards the uh, small amplitudes where so we have the resolution problems obviously. So distribution over the period of oscillation is uh, also similar to uh, decaying oscillations, partial period oscillations, and distribution about the loop length is also so sufficiently flat. So in principle now, this is the best statistics which we have. So we published it about five years ago with uh, Sergei Antinagentov. So, and now uh, uh, my PhD student, Sikhu uh, Jean, so she's working on so improvement of the statistics. So we aim to consider so much more uh, events and hopefully in a year time, so she will be able to uh, present uh, results. So we should include, which would be based upon so much more elaborated uh, statistics. So, but anyway, so we see that statistics of decay and oscillations is very similar to the statistics of decay oscillations. So hence, we can also construct the uh, scaling of the oscillation period with the loop length. And again, we see the uh, linear dependence. So similar to what we saw for uh, decaying oscillations. So this is the plot which I already showed you for decaying oscillations. So this is for decays. Again, so the period scales linearly with the loop length, which clearly demonstrates that we are dealing with 
uh, uh, oscillations, which are natural modes of the uh, oscillations. And here we immediately get a very interesting, uh, say, a tool for probing for the estimation of the magnetic field before solar flares, meaning we are able to make diagnostics of the magnetic field in active regions before major eruptions and major energy releases. Because if kink oscillations are mainly excited by energy releases, by in particular low coronal eruptions, decayless oscillations, they exist always. They exist always, and so we can measure the period of oscillation and the loop length before any uh, flare. So, and just the proof of principle, so uh, is shown here. So it was published uh, recently in our collaboration with uh, Sergei Antinagento from uh, Irkutsk. It's an off-link Arctic region. So, and all those loops which are, are highlighted here by different gray colors uh, show uh, kink oscillations, decayless kink oscillations. So, and analyzing those oscillations, we were able to construct the map of the alpha speed distribution in this Arctic region. So this, uh, the different gray uh, colors correspond to different uh, alpha speeds. So the alpha speed depends upon the magnetic field and the uh, density of the plasma. And in principle, if you have an independent uh, estimation of the density, we are able to make a similar map of the absolute value of the magnetic field. So and this information is uh, unique. So I would like to stress uh, because we are not able to make uh, extrapolation of the field, so using atmospheric sources. So when the active region is off link So this is uh, a very promising avenue for seismological problem of quiet active regions. In other words, active regions in the periods of time before uh, eruptions and uh, flares. And I think it's a very promising say, uh, application of these uh, observations and uh, theory. So now, how, uh, how can we excite the K-distinct oscillations? So the oscillation seems to be monochromatic. It seems to uh, show both decay in large amplitude and decay, decay with low amplitude regimes. So hence, we can just philosophically model what is going on in terms of the uh, driven uh, harmonic oscillator. So here, A, small a, is the displacement. Uh, omega k is the frequency of the uh, kink oscillation, so the eigenmode. And here we have a, a term, which is the dumping term, where delta is the dumping coefficient, in particular, can be uh, so a coefficient responsible for resonant absorption for the transfer of energy or leakage of energy of the kink oscillation into the unresolved uh, alphemic uh, torsional oscillations. So if you don't have the right hand side, you have a standard solution, which is the decaying harmonic oscillation. So the so what we discussed in the first part of the stop, first half of the stop. But to have a decay this oscillation in the presence of the dumping or dissipation we must somehow reinforce the system. We must somehow counteract the uh, dumping of dissipation. So the easiest way is to assume that, so this uh, oscillation is continuously driven. And in particular, it could be driven periodically, for example, by leakage of P-modes, by leakage of uh, chromospheric three-minute oscillations. Anyway, so the right-hand side may be a, a harmonic function. Of course, in this case, we are uh, considering so the situation of a uh, possible uh, resonance between the natural frequency of the left-hand side and the frequency of the uh, drive. But if you make, again, a statistical test, so this is the velocity amplitude of decayless oscillations as a function of the loop length, and the period of oscillation is proportional to the loop length. You don't see any spikes, any pronounced maximum which would correspond to the resonance. In other words, we have an ensemble of resonances. We drive all of them by a monochromatic signal and response of those uh, resonators in the ensemble to the periodic driving. So should be the enhanced uh, um, excitation of uh, oscillations in those oscillators, which natural frequencies are above the frequency of the driving. So, but we don't see any evidence of this uh, phenomenon. So hence we conclude that there is no signature of the resonance, which must be in terms of this model. So hence we, uh, so the uh, decay of skin oscillations are clearly not uh, excited by the leakage of uh, P moles or three minute oscillations. Okay, what else? It's so dependence upon the period. Again, no uh, signature of uh, resonance. 
So what, what is next? Okay, let the uh, right hand side still be present, but let it be a random uh, motion. For example, granulation, uh, say, massaging of the three points of the uh, oscillating loop. So again, so the left hand side is the same, but the right hand side now is a random uh, function. So if the random function is a uh, white noise, so there is the left panel shows the driver. So, and the right hand side shows the response of the oscillator. So actually what we see is the response is uh, sufficiently monochromatic, sufficiently narrow band. So this is the natural oscillation. So at the uh, king frequency, meaning it works, but actually, so the main difference between what we see as the outcome of this uh, model and observations is, so in, in this case, so the phase of the oscillation is not stable. So the signal is uh, sufficiently narrow band, sufficiently monochromatic, but so we have a very significant pronounced jumps in the uh, in the uh, phase of the oscillation. So which is not consistent with the observations. So hence we, so you see that so this model does not reproduce fully uh, so the observations so as we uh, exclude it. So more recently uh, we uh, considered uh, uh, excitation of um, uh, decayless oscillations by a random function so which is uh, 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 so the noise is a uh, red noise or colored noise with more energy in the low frequencies than in uh, high frequencies. Uh, and also we uh, a bit developed the model itself so we considered uh, oscillations uh, in terms of a uh, wave equation, so string-like wave equation. So uh, x is the coordinate uh, along the uh, oscillating uh, loop. So and uh, alpha is the dumping coefficient. And one of the uh, three points uh, so performs uh, chaotic random motion with the uh, red noise uh, spectrum. And the response of the oscillator looks like that. So in principle, it's a bit better than uh, so the previous case. Because uh, obviously, so the signal is sufficiently noisy, but if we average this uh, signal, we'll get something which is uh, sufficiently uh, monochromatic and harmonic, which uh, resembles uh, oscillations, uh, observed oscillations, which in principle may be the uh, say, uh, answer. So this is the uh, result of the uh, distribution of uh, power of oscillations uh, along the uh, uh, loop. So this is the uh, loop. So one foot point, another foot point, uh, and uh, so we see the uh, oscillations. So the fundamental harmonic situated near the center of the loop. Uh, the um, second harmonic uh, situated near the uh, actually in the legs of the loop. And what I show here is the experimental result. Is the analysis of a, a, a data by uh, our team uh, Dakenfield, who is at uh, Leuven now a postdoc. So and so this distribution of the period of the case oh, sorry of the power of the case oscillation uh, over the loop is consistent with the uh, distribution of uh, so the power in uh, in the model which we just uh, discussed. So this is the fundamental mode. So this is the power of the second harmonic with the uh, node at the apex. So the experimental result and uh, modeling so give very uh, consistent uh, say uh, outcomes. So hence in principle it may work. But there is another option because the careless oscillations can also be associated with uh, self oscillations. So self oscillations is a physical phenomenon. So when so a dynamic uh, system is fed by some non oscillatory uh, power, so which is converted to uh, counter uh, converted into uh, say kinetic energy to counteract dumping. So very classical example of a self oscillatory system is a pendulum spring pendulum on a say Kaiten sushi belt, so which moves at a constant speed V and the oscillation experience uh, friction in the springs and also friction between the load and the conveyor belt. And the uh, friction between the conveyor belt and the load is negative. So it has this negative friction counteracts positive friction, energy losses by positive friction in the springs. And the resultant uh, uh, behavior of this dynamic system is a decayless oscillation or a limit cycle a trajectory in the phase portrait. So another illustration of this phenomenon is the oscillation of the violin string. So the uh, stick is very steadily and slowly moving along the string, which excites the natural oscillations of the stream. So this is what we uh, can consider as the mechanism which reinforces uh, losses uh, in the uh, decayless skin oscillations. 
So by uh, motion, so for example, superannuation of flows uh, uh, around uh, so the uh, loop. Uh, no, possibly I can skip this bit. Uh, mathematically, so this uh, model uh, is uh, expressed in terms of the Riley equation. So Lord uh, Riley is the you know, famous uh, physicist and mathematician, and originally, so he designed this model for uh, so uh, music instruments. So, and the difference with the previous model is we don't have the right hand side driver. So the system uh, is simply experiencing the amplitude dependent uh, negative friction because of the presence of the uh, perpendicular uh, steady flows like the motion of the say stick over a stream you know super granulation flow uh, perpendicular to the uh, loop so and uh, so this is a non-linear uh, term so and uh, so the outcome of this model is we can either have uh, so if the initial amplitude of the oscillation is uh, above uh, so some uh, saturated levels to so the limit cycle we have the gradual decrease in the amplitude so and the oscillation becomes um, uh, becomes um, uh, decades and steady. Or if the initial amplitude is lower than this value, it increases to this value. Actually, when I made this figures, I made possibly say not the best visualization because essentially this amplitude level here and here are the same. So I should possibly use the same uh, say uh, scales uh, in the vertical axis, but. So we have two possibilities, either the initial perturbation is uh, above the uh, saturation level, so hence the oscillation decays to the uh, steady oscillation, or it is lower than the uh, steady uh, amplitude and it is amplified. So obviously, so in this oscillation, the energy is not conserved because it's an open system. So the system uh, gets uh, energy by so those uh, external uh, flows. So, and very recently, actually, to my very say, <laughs> great pleasure, so our colleagues from uh, uh, actually now Belgium, uh, sorry, uh, now Novambre, so uh, Costas now is in Novambre, so and uh, Tom Wander Seller in uh, Belgium, so they uh, model this uh, process in 3D using full uh, scale MHD equations. And so this is the outcome of their modeling. So they had a magnetic uh, plasma cylinder. So with a transfer of steady flow, and they managed to uh, reproduce the self oscillatory regime, which is uh, shown through this displacement as a function of time. So hence it works, which is great. So hence actually I'm usually showing uh, so this uh, sketch, which I made myself. So later I was told it's not actually a violin, it's rather a cello, but uh, so this is how we can see uh, so the case in constellations. So uh, loop is uh, associated with the string here. So steady motion is the, you know, for example, supergranulation motion, which reinforces uh, so the oscillation, which is um, steady. So, and also more recent, very recently, so we published a paper with Norbert Magia, who is a, a Newton International Fellow uh, at Warwick now. So we demonstrated that, uh, so this uh, process, so this, uh, sorry, in constellations, so uh, also um, can occur in uh, loops which are uh, bent. So here, so possibly the first signature of the magnetic twist in a loop is uh, so the uh, sigmoidity. So then the uh, shape of the loop becomes non-plane. And essentially what we did, so we took a flux tube and uh, twisted it uh, near one of the foot points making the, um, say, loop uh, so uh, departing from the plane uh, shape. So it's uh, also a so recent paper, so this year in Astrophysical Journal Letters. So, and the results uh, turn to be quite consistent with expectations. So here, so possibly the most important is this uh, our figure showing the estimation of the uh, magnetic field uh, in the uh, loop. So it's comparison of the actual magnetic field. So because of the uh, three-dimensional uh, geometry, we have the maximum and the minimum uh, value. So near the foot point and near the top um, uh, respectively. So here the horizontal axis is the parameter alpha, which is the force free uh, coefficient. So the uh, green is the uh, average uh, magnetic field estimated using uh, King oscillations. Uh, so using the formula uh, based upon the WKB uh, estimation. So and what is possibly not correctly called predicted is the result calculated um, uh, so using the uh, formula on the uh, bottom. So we see that the uh, calculated estimated seismological values of the magnetic field are so very consistent with the actual magnetic field values. And moreover, so we can see that 
Uh, so there is some interesting difference between the estimated uh, theoretically and empirically values of the magnetic field. So uh, if for small um, uh, twist for small alpha for low alpha, so we have a systematically lower estimation. So empirically, so for strong twist we have so the other way around. And in principle, it gives us a very interesting uh, possibility for the seismological determination of the sigma distance in the loop. So which could be combined with another method for the determination of the average magnetic field, for example, uh, force-free uh, extrapolation or uh, microwave uh, spectroscopy. So, and in this case, so we are getting a combined, of course, in perspective, a combined tool for the estimation of the free magnetic energy in the uh, Arctic region. So this is something which has not been done, but uh, so what I so have been talking to you about, I think, opens up our perspectives for that. And in principle, it's uh, everything I wanted to uh, tell you about. So this is the summary, which possibly I read. So in constellations of loops are eigenmodes or standard plasma acoustic oscillations of uh, loops. So in about 86%, they are excited by mechanical displacement from the equilibrium by low coronal eruptions. Well, there are some cases which are clearly inconsistent with this mechanism. Uh, so there is a evidence, statistical evidence, empirical evidence of nonlinear uh, dumping. So the quality factor depends on the oscillation amplitude uh, to the minus uh, two uh, thirds. And this scenario has not been uh, unequivocally uh, reproduced uh, in theory. So while so there are some uh, encouraging results. Uh, so there is another decayless and low amplitude regime of the oscillations. So those oscillations exist always. And so they allow us for uh, applying diagnostic, uh, seismological diagnostic techniques in the quite some, say, periods of time. So in other words, we are able to make estimations of the potential free magnetic energy before flaring uh, and uh, erupting uh, energy releases. So period of those oscillations also depends upon the loop length. So, and it's a very interesting uh, and very promising tool for uh, seismology, uh, especially in the context of uh, providing uh, uh, space weather uh, models with the uh, input parameters. So that's it. Thank you very much.